Hey everybody, welcome to Planet Coaster 2. Frontier was very kind to offer me early access to the game, and with the limited amount of time that I myself had available to play it, I figured I would do the following, and that is to go through everything in this game. And by that I mean all of the scenery, all of the roller coasters, all of the new mechanics which are worth pointing out. And I'm not going through them in any particular order, but I did lay out a bunch of stuff to show you in this video, so without further ado, because this is already going to take a while, let's get started. First and foremost, and I think this is really cool, is the overall graphics improvements. I'm not going to go into this too in-depth, but I think the lighting is the most interesting thing to point out, and this is huge to anyone who played Planet Coaster 1 and had issues making dark rides and things like that. There is now an absolute darkness when you build buildings out of scenery pieces and it takes a little bit of adjusting but as you can see this little building is just made out of wall pieces and it's completely dark except for this little light over here which I built to showcase this and if I light it up a little bit you can actually see the light bleeding in which looks really cool so that's a huge improvement over the first game and overall you can tell that the lighting has changed a lot and you can tell this also by going inside a dark room and just looking at how bright the outside world looks now that we've adjusted to the darkness. Really cool. Then we have the roller coasters. Now as you can see there are many roller coasters in this game already. Many of them are coming back from the first game and I'll just very quickly go over them. But some of them are here for the first time and they have some very special elements. So I'll show those with a little bit more detail. Starting off with the antique water coaster. Now this is interesting because it's a log flume but it's in the coaster section unlike some of the other log flumes in the game. And you can see why when I'm building this already. As you can see, it has a coaster-esque track that you can do a lot of fun stuff with. In real life, some of these also have a coaster element. Now, I believe these are based on the ENF Myler log flume, which have sections like this. But eventually in the game, you'll always have to come back to your typical standard splashdown pieces if you actually want to build a splashdown for this log flume. So, a fun little addition to the water ride roster. Moving on, we have a few rides which were already in Planet Coaster 1, like this, the Crazy Mouse, which is based on the real-life SNSL Loco Coaster, the Drop, which is based on the real-life B&M Dive Coaster, and Energy Coaster, which is based on the real-life Intamin Hydraulic Launch Coaster. Then we have the Floorless, which is based on the real-life B&M Floorless Coaster, and going back here, we have the Giant Inverted Return, which is a giant inverted boomerang from Vekoma in real life. Then we have the inverted two-seater based on the real life Jova Nola inverted coaster and the inverted four-seater which is based on the real life B&M inverted coaster. Another B&M is the B&M flying coaster coming into the game as flying, very simple but effective name, as well as the junior coaster which is the real life zero junior coaster and the launched hydraulic coaster, which is also in real life an Intamin hydraulic launch. This one just has a different track type from that other one. And then we have the hyperdrop coaster, which is based on the real life Gerstlauer Eurofighter, and the launched LSM coaster, which is based on the real life Premier coaster. All of these are coming back from Planet Coaster 1, and I do have to say some of them were the most popular coasters in Planet Coaster 1. Then we have the launched LSM coaster, which is based on the real-life Muck LSM launch coaster. And finally, another new coaster, which is the launched Pneumatic coaster. Now, in real life, this is based on the SNS Air-powered coaster. And you can tell here it has a Pneumatic launch and a very interesting looking track type. Usually in real life, these just do a couple curves and a loop or an airtime hill or something like that. And if you want to find a real life reference, you can look at Dodo Dompa in Fuji Q Highland. I don't want to flex, but I'm one of the very lucky people to be able to ride that thing because it's long been closed because it was actually too intense. But that's a story for another day. Let's move on to the next coaster, which is coming back from Planet Coaster 1 again, which is the, well, it's called Limitless here, but it's based on the real life Infinity Coaster by Gerstlauer. And then we have Looping, which is a Vekoma Looping Coaster. And I shouldn't show this one yet because we're staying in the in-game order. Then we have the other Looping, which is based on the real-life Arrow Coaster. And another Looping Coaster, which is based on the real-life Schwarzkopf Coaster. Which is funny Easter egg, why it's called 
Anton in game, and also basically the original roller coaster tycoon looping coaster. Then we have the Mine Train, all still coming back from the first game, as well as Momentum, which is an intimate impulse coaster which has a shuttle mode. And going back here, we have one of our new coasters, and this one I think is the most exciting addition of all. This is what's called a multiverse coaster, and it's based on a real life coaster by Intamin. And you can find an example of this in real life in Movie Park Germany in the Studios coaster. And this one has a crazy amount of special elements. This is which has the drop track, a reverse drop track, a turntable in all kinds of directions. Also a track and pivot, which is a crazy seesaw maneuver. Then we have a regular seesaw in different directions. Another switch track, a movement stand, which goes another direction. And also very fun. The spring lift, which goes up, unlike the drop track which comes down, and a combined drop and lift part, and finally some other sections that it still had to finish, as well as a drive tire launch. So this is a coaster which is great for doing dark rides, that's really what it's made for in real life as well. And with the new lighting in Planet Coaster 2, I think it's going to make for some really amazing dark rides. We also have the different type of multiverse coaster. It has a slightly different track with the tires in different places, for instance, but otherwise it's not too different. And if I go into the editor, you can tell it has most of the same elements. It just doesn't have the launch that the other one does. And this is based on, in real life, Uncharted in Porto Ventura, which, not to flex, but I was lucky enough to ride in real life as well. And from my experience, the coaster is a really cool thing. Definitely play with all of those special elements as much as you can because that's what they made for in real life as well. Then we have the return coming back from Planet Coaster 1, haha, <laughs> which is a shuttle coaster, or should I say boomerang coaster, and another new coaster, the rotating coaster. Now this I believe is based on the Intamin spinning coaster with controlled spinning and very similar to Objective Mars in Futuroscope in France, which coincidentally is actually where I am today. This video is pre-recorded. And this one doesn't have too many special elements, but it does have an option to change the rotation. So this is a completely controlled rotation and you can choose which direction the cars are looking at at any point in the track. So that's really cool gonna be really good for doing dark rides which is kind of what it's meant for in real life as well just like the multiverse coaster and i was accidentally clicking on something i shouldn't have clicked on yet moving on we have the sit down six seater coaster which is based on the aero hyper coaster we have the sit down lap bar which is based on the real life bnm hyper coaster i'm actually skipping some things we have the single rail which is an rmc coaster rmc t-rex to be specific and the sit-down four-seater, which in real life would be the Intamin Mega Coaster. Then we have another sit-down four-seater, which is a new one. So very quickly showcasing this one, we have a launch track and no other special elements, but this is a very fun addition that I am very hyped for because if you're able to tell, this is a Vekoma new generation coaster, which is a really fun type, which uses lift hills and launches and has very fun creative layouts with crazy elements. So definitely one of the coaster types that you coaster nerds can go haywire on. And then we have the sit-down six-seater, which is based on the real-life Jovanola hyper coaster. And I need to go back uh, to actually get back into order. We have the spinning coaster, which is based on the real-life Maurer Sauna spinning coaster, as well as this other spinning coaster, which is trains instead of separate cars, based on the real-life Muck spinning coaster. Man, this is quite a marathon. Then we have another type of spinning coaster, which is more of your fairground type spinning coaster, made by many manufacturers in real life. And then we have another new one. Now, Planet Coaster 2 has three types of water coasters. There are two new ones, and this is the first of the new water coasters. And this one is based on the muck water coaster like Atlantica Super Splash in Europa Park. And it has a bunch of different track types, which is pretty aesthetic and fun to play with definitely go take a look at Atlantica Super Splash to see what this could look like. But I think the most fun thing about it isn't the typical water track, which most other water coasters in the game have, but this, it has turntables in a bunch of different directions. So definitely play with that. I think it's a very fun coaster to build and it also has some dark ride opportunities, I think. 
Then another new coaster type is this one. It's the Splashdown, and this is based on the B&M Hypercoaster, which we already had in game. But this is a type of Hypercoaster which we didn't have yet, which is the one which includes Splashdown elements. So that's pretty fun to play with. It's usually an element that they add at the end of the layout. And this is also typically a more newer generation type Hypercoaster, I would say. Then we have the B&M Stand-Up Coaster, called Stand-Up in the game. Just coming back from Planet Coaster 1, and again, coming back from the first game, is the Star Loop, which is based on the real-life Marusone type <laughs> looping coaster with vertical lift hills. And this is also a fun coaster in terms of elements, because you can build this type of vertical lift hill, which goes back like this and creates a crazy support structure. Really fun to build, and really fun coasters in general. And we also have the Swaying Mine Train, coming back from the first game. And another new one. This is the Tipper Coaster, which in real life would be the Vekoma Tilting Coaster. And if I show you just what its special element is, you might have already guessed. But this one has a special tilt element. And this is really cool because it tilts 90 degrees, so it's much more intense than the elements on the Multiverse Coaster. Really fun coaster. There's one example in the real world, Gravity Max in Taiwan, but there are some new examples being built soon possibly, so very exciting times ahead because it's a very rare type of coaster. Then we have the water coaster, which isn't really new or anything too exciting, but we also have the third and final and also a new type of water coaster, which is based on the Intamin water coaster in real life. And this one has a very cool special element, which is a vertical lift now, some of you Americans might recognize this as Pilgrim's Plunge. Some of you Europeans might recognize this as Speed in Energy Lundia and Poland. Whatever the case, it's got a really cool element. Uh, you do have to watch out though, because it has this type of section where it drops into the water. And you can get the angle right on this one. I think it's more believable than some of the other water coaster drops. So really fun to play with this one and really cool that they added this into the game as well. Now, moving on, we have another new type of coaster, which is the Wave Coaster, based on the real-life B&M Surf Coaster. And this one doesn't have any special elements, but it does have really cool trains with special stand-up seats that move up and down depending on the G-forces uh, to make it slightly more comfortable and almost like you're kind of surfing, which is really cool. And then moving on from the first game, we have the Wing Coaster, which is based on the Intamin Hyper Coaster type. And then we have the Wing Coaster coming back from Planet Coaster 1. They also had a launched Wing Coaster in Planet Coaster 1. I kind of hope that one's coming back, but who knows? In any case, not too much else to explain about this one. And finally, we have a whole roster of wooden coasters and one more special coaster. The first wooden coaster, which is your classic PTC Woody. The second, which in real life would be a GCI Millennium Flyer. And then another one, which is more of a classic type, but with larger trains this time. As well as a side friction coaster, which is an oldie but a goodie. And a wild mouse wooden coaster, also an oldie but a goodie. And then the wooden hybrid and wooden steel topper coasters, which are based on the real-life RMC coasters. And finally, we have the X-Dimension, which is based on the real-life SNS and Aero multi-dimensional coaster, which is also coming back from the first game, but really fun to play with the rotational seats here. Now, let's talk about flat rides, and I'm going to play the game so you can see some of these in motion. Starting off, we have the giant hubless Ferris wheel radius. We have Resurgence, a small drop tower, I would say, that shoots up. We have the Skywatcher, which is a large observation tower. The Star Wheel speaks for itself, but it does have those very interesting carriages that move around within the spokes. And the Sun Flare, as well as the Screaminator, which is the giant drop tower. All of these are coming back from the first game. Another one is the 360 Power here, which is uh, another return. And then we have a new one, the Behemoth Swing, which is really cool, which is a new ride. Then we also have the Big Wheel coming back from the first game, and also coming back is the Board Slide. But in the first game it was a lot more themed, and now it has just minimal stripped back theming, so you can theme this to your heart's desire. You can also change these elements on the side, I should say, and that goes for every ride here, but it's especially visible on this one. Then also coming back from the first game are the bumper cars, 
And here's another new ride, the buoyancy, which is this crazy looking shooting you out of the water type ride. Then we have the Cheroplane coming back from the first game and the Enterprise and the Forge, which are all coming back from the first game. Then another new addition is right here, the Frenzy Frill, which is quite nice, as well as the Full Flight. Then we have some more coming back from Planet Coaster 1, like the Carousel and the Hammer Swing and the Helion Ring and also the Helter Skelter, the Hyper Spin, the Insanity, the Iron Claw, the Kickflip. Many of these are from the old Vintage Collection in Planet Coaster 1. And the Mecha Roller, which is another very stripped back version of a ride in Planet Coaster 1. So this one is very good for theming yourself, I think. Then moving on, we have the Monsoon Shoot which is a very interesting new type of ride. I imagine it's a little bit like the Tower of Terror type ride which we had in Planet Coaster 1, just a bit more simple. And the Monte Leone, which is also a very classic vintage ride. Overpower, your typical top spin, and the Parallelogram, your typical flying carpet ride, except this time with no theming, so you can theme it to a flying carpet if you want to, but really anything else too. Coming back from Planet Coaster 1, which is also a new ride, I believe. And then we have another new ride, which I think is really cool, the Polarity, which is based on a real-life ride, which is very rare, but it's actually my favorite flat ride in the world, and they've become increasingly rare, unfortunately. And then we have the Wild Blue, which is a crazy booster-type ride. I actually don't know which one this is based on in real life, but it is new and quite cool-looking. Then we have the Sundial, which was already in Planet Coaster 1, as well as the Synchronize, which is a really cool Zamperla type ride, which is new in this game. Also coming back from Planet Coaster 1 are the Teacups, this time without a building, so you can build your own building if you want to. And the Cube, which was also in Planet Coaster 1. We're down to the final three rides. Now this is the Tiny Eye. In Planet Coaster 1 it was called the Whirly Rig and it had a bunch of theming. Very iconic and one of the first rides, but now it's completely themeless so you can turn this into anything you want to. And we also have the pirate ship called Upswing, which also has a lot less theming than it did in Planet Coaster 1, but I imagine that anyone can put their own sails and decorations on this thing to make it look more awesome. And finally, we have this really cool ride called Wild Blue which isn't a new addition, but it's really cool and worth pointing out. Now let's take a look at the tracked rides. We have the Family Train, a typical train type ride, the Antique Powered Cars, and the Cable Car, which is a typical cable car. All of these are coming back from the first game. We also have a Ghost Train and a new type of Ghost Train, which is worth showcasing, I think, because it has very long trains and you can also control the pitch and the yaw of the trains, so you can really specifically make them look at very specific scenes, which is quite nice, and I think also going to be a great ride for dark rides. Uh, and then we have the powered automated vehicle ride, which is based on the... Now let's take a look at the track rides. Most of these are making a return from Planet Coaster 1, like the family train, the antique powered cars, the cable car, and the go-karts. But there's also something new here. We have the powered rotating ride, which also allows you to control the pitch and the yaw of the vehicles. So very good for doing dark rides. We also have basically coming back from the first game, but now completely themable, the powered automated vehicle ride, which is very good for dark rides, as well as the classic monorail, which we know from the first game and the regular log flume. Then we have a single decker bus, which is new and a very interesting addition and the sit-down powered, which is, technically speaking, if you ask any coaster enthusiast, really a roller coaster, because it's based on Casey's train in Disneyland. But, you know, it's in track rides here, which I also understand. It's really just for kids. Then we have the classic big steam train railroad and the wide log flume, which is an interesting larger type of log flume, which is actually new in the game. Now it's time to look at scenery, and I am very hyped for this one. And I built this sort of botanical garden to showcase you the major trees. So let's start off with those. We have acacia trees, looking quite nice, and we have Aleppo trees. And you might already notice that the trend with these trees is that you get one large one, one medium one, and one small one. And that goes for most of these trees. 
Not for the bald cypress, we get only two of those. And then we have the black poplar, quite nice. The black spruce and the, well, the full name is blue gum eucalyptus, but on some of these I couldn't fit in on the slides. Then we have the coconut palm, looking a lot better than the palms in Planet Coaster 1, I have to say. And the date palm and the desert fan palm for all of your tropical destinations. An elm tree. We have an Indian almond, a fig, a European larch, which is quite nice, I think. A European ash, which also fits very well. And an Italian cypress, uh, making a return from Planet Zoo, I suppose. And it's a lot more detailed than the ones in Planet Coaster 1. Then we have a Japanese cherry and a Japanese maple. So that's going to be great for Asian builds. And who knows, an Asian DLC in the future, maybe. A juniper tree, lipstick palm, and the London plane tree. Then we have some small ones here with the olive tree, as well as the oak tree, which is very large. The Nikau palm, mimosa, and ponderosa pine. We have quaking aspen, going to be great for American builds and very much autumn or fall builds, if you will. Scots pine and sugar maple, and also the sycamore. Then we have, I forgot a sign for this one, I see, the crimson king maple, which is really cool and also going to be great for autumn builds together with these trees. The white birch, and probably my favorite, the weeping willow, which looks a lot better than in Planet Zoo. I'm actually very hyped to use this one. And the tamarind. And lest I forget, these giant kapok trees for your tropical rainforest needs. And, of course, we also have a lot of bushes and shrubbery and that type of stuff. So let's quickly go over those as well. We have aloe vera here, as well as the arrowwood bushes. Going to be great for ground shrubbery. Banana palms, small cacti with the barrel cactus. Beach cabbage, another great ground shrub. Bracken fern, really great to put alongside your forest floors and alongside paths and stuff. Creosote bushes, as well as common reeds and bulrush reeds. Gonna be good for ponds and rivers and stuff. Bramble bushes, blackthorn bushes, many different variations of bamboo. And noteworthy, many variations of hedges, and these are looking much more 3D and natural and realistic than the ones in Planet Coaster 1. So I think that's a huge improvement, and with the amount of shapes we have here, you can do almost anything with it. Then we have creosote bushes, and also many variations of grapevines, which look really nice and are also going to be great for gardens and places like that. And we also have foxglove flowers and many different types and shapes of flower beds. And these are all recolorable, by the way, so you can do a lot with these flower beds, I think. Then we have elephant ear plants and desert ironwood, hardy ice plants, both non-flowering and flowering, heather plants, one <laughs> juniper bush to go with the juniper trees, some cantia palms, some very big king ferns, some lady ferns and laurel bush and many different variations of rhododendrons which are very nice flowering and non-flowering and also these are recolorable. I think the recolorability of many of these plants is going to be what makes them as flexible as they are. We also have the prickly pear and some more ground shrubbery with periwinkle again flowering and non-flowering. Rose bushes also flowering and non-flowering and sunflowers and also it's called the Swiss cheese plant but that couldn't fit on my sign so I just call it the Monstera here. We also have wheatgrass which is going to be cool for farm fields if you're into that sort of thing and wild garlic again flowering and non-flowering and this I think is really cool. We have new wisteria clusters and there's a whole bunch of them. Many of these are just coming over from Planet Zoo but they are looking very good and we also have your classic vine pieces looking great as well. And with a little bit of a 3D texture. So I think these are also huge improvements over the ones in Planet Coaster 1. Then, and I'm lumping this in with foliage because I can, we have three different types of rock work. The bottom three are not recolorable but have a bunch of different textures. But these are recolorable and very interestingly also with two color slots. So you can see which variation you like best and I think it helps a lot to have these different colors because it's otherwise very hard to make natural looking textures that you can also recolor but I think they pulled it off with this one 
very handy texture and because we have these small pieces and you can also rescale them if you want to you can really make them as large as you want to and actually build really big rock facades out of this i think and make them recolorable so that's going to be super handy we also have some barnacles to go along with it then we have these three types of rocks we have the mossy rocks which i think are probably going to be my favorite look really cool the mediterranean rocks which look a bit out of place in this kind of environment which i have here and the tropical very dark rocks all in the same shapes I do think with the tropical rocks you can see the texture repeating a little bit too much for my liking but the mossy rock texture is definitely my favorite here. Now let's look at the scenery pack starting off with the viking set which is almost 400 pieces lots of interesting stuff like this boat yard netting many different pieces that you can make boats out of also some cog wheels which you can animate if you put them on an animated thing and I'm going to show that off very quickly but not quite yet. A hay bale and some other clutter items as well as this really cool fiery dragon statue and the sails over here which I'll get to that area later. We also have some column capitals great for your logs like this one and some more clutter elements here like small viking banners, lots of weapons and shields and all of that good stuff. A really cool musical hammer statue which you can actually animate as well so let's quickly look at them doing their thing very nice as well as some other clutter items by the way i am pausing the game because i don't want bad weather to start arriving because it's gonna mess my showcase off but it might happen then we have a bunch of different flags which wave in the wind quite nice as well as big rope pieces and wooden pieces there are some doors in the set very fancy good looking doors i think as well as this giant gate over here which of course can be animated as well to close and the same goes for this gate here we have this giant pillar more doors and then well i'm just going to show it some of the boat pieces so some sails which you can probably use to make the pirate ship flat ride a bit more fancy as well as some of these elements which you can use to make your boats a bit nicer like all kinds of wooden planks and jetty pieces and poles and floors and all of these beautiful decorations and as you notice many of these are recolorable in different types of colors so i think you can use them on really any kind of theme you want to if you use them creatively also this viking fence which is made out of rocks where you can recolor all of the rocks into different colors is absolutely amazing i think this viking door trim is beautiful and going to be very useful we also have some reefed sails more different logs and posts the amount of items here is really stunning. We have some umbrellas slash parasols, I should say, and this crazy rune stone type theme with a bunch of different elements. Worth showing off here, I think, is the fact that all of these elements are recolorable, both the rock color as well as the elements on top of it. So you can make it look a little bit more realistic as well. Then we have these fun little guys and some more stone elements, as well as a sign, which I quickly want to showcase we have many different uh, fonts for these signs. I think the Norse font, of course, is very good for this one, but they have already included some fonts for themes, which I think aren't in the game yet, but maybe they are hinting of things to come. Who knows? As well as very fun little sign elements, which I think are gonna be great to theme flat rides with, or just for restaurants and stuff. All of these sign elements can get text added to them and then we have all of these trims, very cool decorated pieces, which you can definitely use for themes other than Viking. I'm already considering how some of these are very useful for maybe Alpine or Swiss builds. Then we have stone floors and walls, and you might be able to notice that we have a whole array of different pieces laid out here. And judging from this particular wall here, again, we can give them different types of colors to change that texture, so that is super handy. And we also have many different roof pieces of this uh, very nice looking, I think, tiled roof in different shapes. And this is definitely also very useful outside of a Viking theme as well. You can find these types of tiled roofs in many cultures around the world or any type of fantasy setting if you want to, really. A bunch of wooden pieces to go along with it as well. Although, do be noted, many of these are gridded pieces, so... Unfortunately for me, I can't quite use them to go crazy on the piece count. 
as well as some other frame and roof pieces. Then we have the wood and all of the floors and walls that we get with those. Some details, some more windows and fences. I actually said fences because most of these are fences, I just realized. Although this one does kind of look like window. You can probably use it for that as well. And we also have this wooden texture, which is again recolorable with three different colors, which makes it very flexible for other types of themes as well. We also have this fun planter type deal going on here that you can put flowers and bushes in and really decorate your buildings with. Some more clutter, the clutter is kind of all over the place here, as well as a whole array of windows here, uh, which is going to be fun to play with. More planters and a bunch of different lanterns and things to hang them from, which are going to be super useful as well. And finally, one more row of wooden pieces here, which I think are going to make this set very flexible. So that's it for the Viking set. Now let's take a look at the resort theme, and this one has almost 500 pieces. If you couldn't tell already, it's taken me a long time to place all of these down. Starting off with some aged roof pieces, which are recolorable, and just one color, unfortunately this time, but I think it'll work fine for the theme here. And all of the pieces are the same as the other ones which we're used to, which I didn't really put any attention toward, but we have basically one meter, two meter, and four meter tall roof pieces, in different variations, corners, and also just straight pieces. So that's basically that. Then we have this interesting little asymmetrical pillar, which I found a bit of a, an interesting outlier, and a bunch of different posts, which again, you can color. So if you don't like the different colors that these have, or you just wanna make them wood textured, you can do that as well. We also have some wooden walls here in all of the standard shapes and sizes. What's worth pointing out is that some of these are ungridded. So this one, for instance, this is the small piece. Every wall set has this one. This larger one is also ungridded. You can basically put in any direction which you like. So it's gonna be great for those of us who wanna build our buildings very much in the way that we want to. Then we have some planter pieces and um, moving on, also a funny little beach ball. All of these walls, these bamboo walls are also recolorable as you can see with a single color. And this beach ball is also recolorable if, they, if you're into that kind of thing, I suppose. We have some small concrete pillars and some more animated elements, which are these dancing flags, pretty funny to play with, as well as a whole set of plaster pieces. And I think these plaster pieces, especially these ones, which aren't gridded, are gonna be uh, quite good when, when it comes to detailing. And I think these plaster pieces, especially these small ones, are going to be really good for those of you who like detailed buildings. We also have plaster pieces with a special colored wall on it, and of course we can recolor this as well if we want to. And if we recolor the whole thing, it ends up looking like the simple basic plaster piece, like this one. We also have a bunch of different pieces in the middle, like this crazy hammerhead shark element and some inflatables that you can place down. It's pretty fun to play with and some more posts and stuff like that and moving on i'm gonna leave some of those walls for what they are we have some canopies and shop windows in the tropical style we also have some very simple railings which are going to be great for modern builds and these elements which are some interesting balcony elements which you can probably use in a way in which we've seen in some of the trailer builds for uh, Planet Coaster 2. There's this specific element, the resort balcony wall trim, which seems to be glitching for me and has this texture glitch going on when I zoom out. I don't know if that is for everybody or if that is also for every side of the object. It seems like this part is not glitching, but maybe that's something to look into uh, for Frontier if you're watching. And we also have this buggy, which is really cool. Reminds me of the James Hunt buggy from Rollercoaster Tycoon 3. And some ceiling lamps here, as well as a big door. And also, very fun, these posters, which I think are really awesome. I think this one's my favorite. Whoever made this is, is an artist. You know, of course they are, but I, I mean it in a literal sense. Or maybe that's not the literal sense. Anyway, moving on, we have some other planters here and very nice parasols, which are generic enough, I think, to be used in just about any theme. 
a cool metal lamp as well as some hanging lights. And these, these pieces I think are going to be key because if you make these things all white, you actually get rid of that texture that they have and you can make light strips and neon lights and stuff like that out of it. Remember, we can rescale anything, so you can definitely turn these into cool neon stuff, I think. We also have other cool lights, this whole <laughs> section here, and some different fences and all kinds of doors, which are going to be quite useful for basically any kind of generic type theme as well. There's a bunch of signs in this pack, uh, which you can put text on almost all of these. And also these specific smaller signs with some Planko language stuff on it, as well as this cool surfboard sign and this giant roadway sign. The signs are never ending here. We also have a small set of bamboo stuff, which is going to be great for fences and roofs and things or trims. Then also some trim pieces as wall decorations, as well as these little wall decorations, which are quite nice. And these giant wall decoration pieces, which comes in a large variety of different shapes that you can use for your modern buildings. And I think especially with some of these shapes that these have, you can use them for some more generic modern buildings as well. Then we have these beautiful wooden pieces, which I think also kind of combine with the wooden pieces in the Viking sets, as well as these wooden wall decorations here, which you can probably also use for fences or walls or interiors, who knows? I think these lamps over here, these, these wall lights are really beautiful. And we also have more bamboo walls in all the different shapes and sizes that we are used to. And I think it's interesting to note that these are all ungridded. So you can do with these things what you want. I think you can get pretty creative with those things. Maybe even make some bamboo scaffolding, who knows. And then we have a bunch of windows, most of all, and also shutters. I think these shutters are going to be very useful for also non-tropical types of builds. And that also goes for these shutters, which you can also recolor to make them not have that specific kind of wavy pattern to them. Uh, let me actually, there we go. That's the right color. Then we have the thatch roofs, which I think is are really cool because we can recolor the thatch. I didn't see this coming, but I think it's huge. If you really wanted to, you can slightly change the color. As you can see, if you make it blue, it's just going to have a sort of bluish hue to it. Uh, it's not going to be all blue, but I think it's actually more realistic this way because it would look too weird otherwise. But this way we can at least have the texture slightly be different from one building to the next or you know, trying to make it fit with the overall look of your park. So that really lends a lot more flexibility to these roof pieces. So big thanks to that frontier. We also have a bunch of surfboards here and these cool animated statues and some simple windows to play with. Now the thatch roof set is basically never ending. As you can see, there are all kinds of different roof pieces in here. So it's very flexible. Then we also have some other roof pieces. We have the tiled roof which is also quite nice. And moving on from the tile roof, we have some more of these kind of Moai statue wood carving things, which are looking very cute. And these little flowers, they're very nice little elements, I think that you can use to decorate coasters and flat rides with. We also have a whole system to basically build food trucks if you want to, because the counters are also flexible. So you could probably do something with these and I don't have the time to figure this all out, but I think there's probably some fun stuff that you can try with this. And that's probably also what they are meant for. And then we also have these roof pieces, which are the wooden roofs, also quite flexible. And I think good for other types of modern-esque builds as well. And again, recolorable as well. And closing off this set, we have these light wooden walls that we can also recolor. So yeah, what does the texture really matter? So that's the resort set. Now let's take a look at the mythology theme, which is 450 pieces. Loads of small decorations like these things, and I say small, but you can make them large if you want to, remember? And also loads of marble decorations like these things. Also these drapes, which are really beautiful and I think gonna be very useful for all kinds of themes. Then we have these golden roofs, which are basically also called the gilded roofs, but we can recolor those as well, so keep that in mind. They are at least somewhat flexible. 
Then we have many different sets of marble-esque walls with these pediment pieces for Greek and Roman temples and stuff like that in different shapes and sizes and also different variations of steepness. And you can see right here we have a whole slew of fountains as well in different sizes because if you do rescale a fountain of course that whole thing over here is going to be rescaled as well and these all have the same height so that is something that I think is also a relevant addition and now that it's in my screen anyway I do want to point out we have these shade sails which I'm super happy with it's a very common thing on roller coaster queues for example and especially in tropical climates a much needed thing I built this little pediment piece to showcase how the marble uh, texture on all of these pieces is actually quite flexible because it comes with different colors we have a bottom color for the trims and then we also have some colors for the marble itself so for example I could make the marble a bit more light and actually put that texture on it with a slightly more dark color and then we get something very different so very flexible piece and I think the way that they went about recoloring it is very clever as well and with all of these pieces combined I'm not going to go too much into it you get a lot of flexibility out of this set, I think. We have marble brick pieces as well as standalone marble pieces like this. So this is what a regular marble wall would look like. And it also has that slight sheen, that glimmering of marble in real life. Then we have, very important, I think, the tile walls, which are much appreciated for most themes out there in the real world i think and I, I mean tile roofs not tile walls and again these are also recolorable on a bunch of different things so obviously i don't want to make this blue for realism's sake but that little variation that you can add to the texture i think is going to go a long way in making different builds look slightly different and trying to tweak these pieces to what you're looking for exactly now this is where it gets exciting for a classical architecture fan. We have uh, some columns and of course we're going to get matching capitals with those as well but I'll get into that in a second. And some large marble blocks but of course these aren't always going to be large you can make them pretty small as well or pretty huge if you really wanted to. And we also have some lantern pieces, some fences, some really nice doors, one really really big door and some gilded doors as well. And then here, some column capitals. Now this one has some sort of gilded capitals as well. So that is something that you kind of have to play with a little bit. But they are looking quite nice. My only concern here is that using too many of them, they're probably all going to look very much the same. But who knows, maybe it's something we can play with. Then we also have this cool fire pit lamp here. And some planters to go along with this theme as well in all the typical planter sizes and shapes that you get in this game. There's a bunch of clutter, many different pots and pans and stuff like that, as well as this cool scroll light and pieces that you can make a mythology ship out of, as well as a mythology ship ore, and the sail, of course, with the giant planet coaster logo, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's, also, it's always going to be a little bit visible at the very least. And then we also have some sails that are rolled up like this. And then we get to stuff that I find very interesting. Loads of little trims, which are also going to be useful for other themes and really any classical inspired architecture, be it French or uh, maybe Austrian or Baroque, Rococo. I think you can do a lot with these kinds of things looking into European architecture or fantasy architecture. We have many signs here, some shields, cool little arrow piece, some shop fronts, as well as some of these awnings, um, a giant ship, some more wall lights, many different windows, some of them more simple than some others, and all of the pieces that it takes to build a Poseidon statue. And you get so many pieces with this that you can make your own poses if you want to. The whole thing can also be recolored, so you could also make it something like oxidized copper, like this. We also have this giant trident. And these small decoration pieces, which I'm also very happy with. These are going to be great for doing general classical architecture. We also got some fun little statues of some peeps. Then we have this big scenery group here, which is another wall set with very large bricks. Something to point out for many of these wall sets with brick pieces, especially if you think the brick texture is maybe a little bit too large for your uh, liking. 
you can always reskill these as well, obviously, and this goes without saying, but I think it's going to make some of these textures a lot more flexible and you can get some more use out of the pieces that you otherwise would have not quite liked. And of course, this can be recolored as well. I don't think I showed it off too well here, but you can make these pretty dark. It is just one recolor though. And we also get some other pieces with this. So again, some more pediment pieces for your temple needs and loads of those standard curves and stuff as well. Then we get some very interesting moving pieces. If you want to build a water wheel, could be useful for other themes as well. A bunch of rubble and things. If you want to build a sort of ruined temple and some statues, which are very fun to play with as well. And that's it for the mythology theme. Now let's take a look at the aquatic theme, which is the smallest theme in the game with a little over 300 pieces. Starting off, we have an anchor, of course, very typical, and some corrugated metal floors and roofs. And what's interesting about this texture, I think, is that looking at this, you can also recolor this with two different colors and really make it look like some corrugated metal, which has been through some stuff. Could maybe be very good for abandoned warehouses or apocalyptic builds or things like this. And we also got some wall sets to go along with those roofs, and they also have the same shapes you can definitely tell we have these very large curved roof pieces which are going to be fun to play with and then we get to some submarine pieces so for instance these are some aquatic doors and this is a door that you can probably use for rides as well oh and then we have this hatch which i don't think you can use this for a coaster at least personally i wouldn't because well realism purposes but it is a really cool looking hatch, so maybe there is some stuff that you can do with this. Or if realism isn't as much of a concern, I think it's really awesome. Then we have some cool animated sea life stuff, like these jellyfish and fish and this fun little beastie over here, which got a pretty big role, I think, in some of the first stuff that came out of Planet Coaster 2, some of the first videos. Then we have some more doors, loads of different doors. I think some of these are very useful for general warehouses and things like that. Also, everything is yellow right now, but keep in mind that all of these elements are repaintable. So this yellow could very well be red if you want to. So I think these pieces are much more flexible than they look at first glance, especially this lantern, for instance, could be very cool just standing in a harbor somewhere. And we also have these different metal floor and roof pieces, which are also grid items. So keep that in mind. We also have this really cool, which is one of the only glass pieces in the game. I'm saying I think it's slightly unfortunate, but it is very cool looking. And then we have a bunch of other different metal pieces as well as the corner pieces that you need to make them look a bit more clean. I'm also getting distracted by this really cool array of different metal beams and girders. The amount of things that you can choose from here is absolutely nuts. And of course, these are all recolorable as well. So I think this whole set, but especially some of these pieces and the pipes that we'll get to in a minute, they're going to be very cool for steampunk builds. There's a lot of potential here. And that goes for these metal walls as well. Obviously, they're just yellow right now, but you can recolor those as well into more natural looking colors. So this is the enormous variety of pieces that you can play with uh, from the aquatic sets all with basically the same texture. We also have these parasols, which I think are generic enough to play with for generic builds as well and really put into any theme. And this array of pipes and stuff, which is gonna work well for the aforementioned steampunk theme, I think. We also have this crazy elevator elements, cargo lifts, as well as some other machinery in here. And these funky singing eels, <laughs> very interesting. And also some shipwreck pieces like this wood, which I think is also going to be good for some of the more rustic themes. Definitely very useful. Now, I'm kind of flying through all of these pieces in a very random pace. These are all the kinds of little things that you can choose from to build your submarine. So we have some propellers and some periscopes and some of the body parts of a submarine. And all of the little things that can stick out, the little lamps and the letters and the, all the, the different elements that you can stick on a submarine. And I think some of these are also going to be useful for other themes. I could very well see 
generic trims and lampposts being made out of these pieces, especially now that we can rescale them. The amount of customizability that these little pieces give you is absolutely insane. We also have some robot arms which we can loop as well, so there's a lot of fun to be had with those, and all kinds of tanks and ballasts too. Now we get to, actually before we do that, let me finish looking at some of these pieces. We have some windows, loads of windows actually, and some other storage pieces, so lots of clutter for your aquatic builds as well. And many signs too, all of these signs can be written on, and we also have some of the more animal-like signs which are fun, I think, to decorate shops and rides and things like that. And then we have the coral, which we have quite a few items of as well, and all of these are also recolorable in different types of colors. So while I think the colors that they have right now are very fitting, and I'll probably keep most of them, it's also very fun to play with some of these colors, because as you can see, the way that the different colors on these things interact with each other gets really trippy and really cool and just the amount of variety that you get out of this is basically endless so very fun pieces to play with as well and then our final pieces are some more larger submarine pieces and little submarine pieces like this over here and that is basically it for the aquatic set so it's not that big, but I think there are many pieces in here which lend themselves very well for all kinds of themes, much more than just being the submarine theme. So I think this is definitely the kind of theme that you can see creative folks getting crazy on. And now our final theme is the generic Planet Coaster theme, which is almost a thousand pieces, which is insane. But there are all kinds of random doodads in here as well. So I'm gonna go over this a little bit more quickly and skip over some of the things which aren't quite as interesting. Art shapes are making a comeback, as you can tell from this arch. There are a bunch of different art shapes. We also have many different icons, all kinds of iconography in this set, like this body dryer sign, for instance. And we also have a brick wall set. Now, this brick wall set is recolorable in a basic color like this, as you can see. Then we also have another brick wall set, which is making a return from Planet Zoo, I think. At least it looks very similar to the brick wall set that we had in Planet Zoo. So this is going to be great for northern european or maybe even dutch builds it is something that i am thinking of now for some reason these walls are a little bit um, all over the place but in addition to these wall sets we have some floors and also the decals are coming back from planet zoo and i think this is great you can do a lot with these decals to make your walls look a little bit more grimy and broken and unfinished so that's really nice and this wall set is now completely recolorable it does come with just a single color, but it makes it a lot more flexible than the brick walls were in Planet Zoo, for instance. And I think it's also somewhat impressive. It doesn't look like a texture which could be recolorable at first glance, but it actually works. And then we also have some other wall pieces, these painted brick walls. You can hardly tell that they are painted brick walls because, well, the color right now is so white. But when you zoom in, you can tell that they are white painted brick walls. You should never ever paint your brick wall, by the way, but that's just in a real life case. I think in Planet Coaster we can get away with it. Then we have some chain pieces, also making a comeback from some earlier games. Okay, I can't resist showcasing this. We have a cool ferry building as well as a coach to kind of possibly make it look like those are the ways that people are arriving to your park. And of course we have King Coaster as well with some statues. And then we have all kinds of support pieces. Now these are supports for slides. So as you can tell, for instance, this should be an arm to support some slides. But given the fact that we can rescale them, I think these are gonna be quite useful for roller coasters as well. So the roller coaster supporting enthusiast club shouldn't worry too much, I think. Then we have a bunch of different signs, all looking kind of generic slash art deco-ish as well as standalone text that you can place. Now this text is just 2D, so you do have to worry out, watch out a little bit with that. But I think if you use the park tech trick and place a couple in a row, you can make them look believably 3D as well. So something fun to play with as well. And then we have a whole HVAC system of, well, along with the air conditioning unit that was over here, all kinds of air ducts that you can play with. 
there's all kinds of art shapes that you can play with as well. Some window fronts for shops as well as two fonts. Now only the top font actually has lowercase letters but the bottom font is a little bit more generic and less decorated so I think that one's going to be useful for all kinds of builds. Then we have some log pieces, more signs and some metal roofs making a comeback from the first game but now they are recolorable. Very nice, as well as these blue recolorable roofs and these beams that go along with them. And on the top floor of this scenery showcase, we have some rain gutters, uh, so that's interesting. And more art pieces, art shapes that you can play with, as well as uh, some different inflatables. Then we also have these curbs, which might be interesting for streetscapes, not entirely sure. As well as a lawn border, which I found a very random piece, but I think it's going to be very useful for decorating trims of roofs or walls or anything like that. We also have some generic planter pieces here and another wooden wall piece, which is one of the most painted looking, I think. So if you want to build painted wooden houses, for instance, maybe some Scandinavian architecture, I think these walls are actually quite good for that sort of thing. There are also some other wall pieces, but first let me showcase the fact that we have some other decal pieces in the shape of these moss decals, which are quite nice. And I think these are some of the most important pieces in this whole game. We have these moving platforms. Now you can attach scenery to moving scenery. So you can attach some scenery pieces to other moving pieces as well, like the Minotaur, which I quickly skimmed over actually. But these are made to be customized and I made some examples which are a little bit goofy but here we have a rotating air conditioner unit and I did this one to prove that you don't need to attach any of the scenery to other scenery you can put this anywhere in the park and this thing will spin along with it which is I think really cool we also have this back and forth movement horizontally and this vertical back and forth movement now all of these also have different types of animations that they can cycle through. So for instance, this can do that to kind of do a hammering motion. Uh, this one can also do a quarter chop like this, or maybe just very fast spinning uh, or in the other direction. And this one can also do very similar things like going explosively into this direction like this could be good for some jump scares. So you can play with these things and it's gonna be a lot of fun figuring out what you can do with that. But overall, I think it's gonna make dark rides very interesting and maybe you can even make moving buildings. The amount of crazy stuff that you can do with this. Now moving on, we have another wall and roof sets, which is just a basic panel wall, which we can also recolor as you can tell here. We have some speakers that we can play music from and just put around your park and put your own tracks into. Then we have some other parasols, some more <laughs> modern looking ones in this case, as well as a whole slew of windows and very fine details and small lamps, I think are also gonna be interesting to play with when it comes to detailing. Some window fronts, some awnings, some lanterns, or I should say in this case, just street lights, some lampposts, very modern ones, which are gonna be useful for generic lighting, as well as doors and some more shade sails and other interesting roof shapes. And this one is not a grid piece, so you can put this in any direction which you like. So it's gonna be very useful, I think, for all kinds of modern architecture. And then we also all have these crazy archway pieces that you can play with and maybe turn them into lanterns or something. We have Queen Splash over here, as well as garbage, good for your backstage areas, and also some small fences made out of ribbons, some very simple roof trims with all kinds of the corner pieces that you need with those ropes, very useful, as well as the bunched up knots that you can use alongside posts, some scaffolding for if your park is under construction maybe, some pieces that were once upon a time in Planet Coaster 1 grid pieces, but now you can put into any which direction you want to. Quite nice for generic supporting, some more Planet Coaster themed stuff, and nice little signage for your backstage areas perhaps. Some support pieces, and loads and loads of little 
wall decorations and i think these wall decorations in this set are going to be huge for decorating shops or rides and making custom coaster cars and stuff like this we can make faces with these so you can put googly eyes on basically anything you want to we also can put all kinds of natural stuff clouds vents as well for the backstage nerds some more decals for all of your messiness and also your grittiness that you want to add so we also have these grungy decals making a comeback from planet zoo as well as these fun little trucks here some more iconography that you might need in your park some more wall and roof pieces doors more icons and more wall decorations and these are so diverse i can already see all kinds of themes being appropriate for all kinds of these decorations more trims in case you thought you needed more trims and all kinds of water themed decorations as well Ooh, and this piece which is also no longer a grid piece and you can put in any which direction you want to same for some of these other supports and loads and loads of decorations i can't go over all of these what I do think is interesting is some of these wooden pieces at the end here, which are also very flexible and very small. I like that a lot. And also some mesh wooden grid fences and more wooden wall pieces, which is also relevant, I think, to point out that the back and the front are separately colorable. So that's really cool. These are also fountain pieces, as you can tell from the different animations going on there. So that's also really cool to play with. And that is basically the enormous basic Planet Coaster theme. And that should be all the scenery pieces in Planet Coaster 2. It's a lot, but uh, we did it. Now, I almost forgot to mention, but this is of course worth showcasing as well. Scenery can stick to roller coasters and to rides. So if I play this roller coaster, for instance, this crazy little air conditioning unit that I stuck on top of it is going to travel with the coaster car. And no matter where I put the air conditioning unit, it could be on the other side of the map. If it is linked to the car, it'll travel alongside with it. And the same goes for flat rides. So there is endless customization possibilities here. And I think this is going to be huge, especially for people doing creative things. YouTubers and people in the forums building stuff. I think from now on you can build stuff for people instead of just building stuff and, I don't know, making people feel jealous or insecure about their own skills. I envision something maybe a bit like the workshop in City Skylines. Moving on, we have water slides. Of course, I need to showcase these as well. Now, we have a bunch of different water slides called flumes in the game. And if I go to create custom, we can see that it's seven in total. A body flume, which is a regular type of water slide. A body slide and a body slide wide, which is kind of like a family slide or a speed slide in real life. A double inner tube flume and a single inner tube flume. A matte flume, which is kind of like the earlier two, but with a slightly smaller slide. And also the raft flume, which is the largest one. Now, I built a couple of these and put them in here as a showcase of all the different types. I also added two body flumes because they've got a special starting piece, which I think really turns it into its separate category of slides, which is the speed slide. And to build these things, we just put one of these inside a path and then edit the flume and... For each of these slides, there are some other things worth showing off. So the regular body slide, for instance, has these special elements. These slides don't have any special elements, but this one does have some special elements as well. So if I edit this flume, we can see it has this glass element, which actually the body slide has as well. Uh, you also have these kind of special elements on the side. But the real special elements are that it has uphill water jets that you can use to make a master blaster, for instance. And it also has a conveyor belt that you could use to, for instance, bring back rafts at the end of a layout or maybe at the start, um, whatever it is that you're looking for. And the same also goes for the regular inner tube flume, which is basically the same, except it uses different vehicles. And then, of course, we have the matte plume as well, which is used as a sort of head-first matte layout, as you can see by the test dummy going down the slide right there. And this one also has uphill water jets, which I find interesting. I don't think these usually have them in real life. At least I haven't seen it. But who knows? I'm uh, not the ultimate expert on these things. But other than that, it doesn't really have any special type of elements. But it is noteworthy that it has 
some um, different types of slide pieces. So for instance, if you just go straight, it has a slide piece which looks a lot like this one, but it also has an enclosed round piece as well. And then finally, we have the big raft flume, which has uh, some special elements as well, quite a few actually. It has uh, this, and 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 this. There's a lot of variety that you can do with this one, much more than some of the other slides, uh, like this giant funnel as well, which is slowly disappearing into the ground, but you get the idea. Uh, some of these are also available on the inner tube slides, by the way. So that's the huge array of slides in the game. And finally, I wanted to take a look at one of the last pieces of creative management in this game because I'm keeping some of the other management functions out of this video to at least keep it somewhat in check. But these are all the different path types that we can use in the game. There's quite a few of them, as you can see, including two natural ones that just use the in-game terrain and you can also paint these. So if you really want to change them, you could. And you could also just make this one completely invisible if you wanted to. Really the only difference is that it starts off with this grassy or uh, sandy texture. And then we also have the queue lines with a bunch of different textures. The only thing I want to note here, and this is something that I'm a little bit disappointed by, but it was a conscious decision by the looks of it, is the fact that there's a Planet Coaster logo on all of these queues on a repeating texture throughout the entire map, which it is what it is. And then we also have this uh, staff path as well. And that is it for all the path types. And generally, that's it for all the different features in the game. There's a whole load of management uh, things that I could show off. And also the path builder in general is absolutely insane. There are so many ways that you can build paths in here. You can use the line tool to create paths like this. You can use a stamp builder to place down paths like this. You can use a rounding tool to round things off and you can even customize a brush. You could also just build paths right on top of each other. So for instance, I could customize a style, uh, build a path right over this one and it'll work just like that. And if I add another one, uh, we can go straight through it. Absolutely insane. I think they went from a path tool in Planet Coaster 1, which was sometimes criticized to thinking we need to put everything into this path tool that we can and try and have every functionality that people want to the point where sometimes I think it's maybe even a little bit much but uh, given some time hopefully we'll get there and we'll get used to the tool and it'll actually become very handy. Ooh, and that reminds me that I should also talk for a bit about the different pool options in the game because there are quite a few there are these different tiles that we can choose from and there are also different tile edges for the pool. So if I take for instance these tiles, it looks like this. These tiles look like this. And then we also have these different tiles and also these different edges. So loads of different looks that we can combine and also combine into a single pool, as you can tell. And there are also all kinds of pool extras as well, some of which you can't place in other places. So for example, we have these different diving boards, some different variations for lifeguards as well, as well as a simple lifeguard post, some different letters, and of course also some sun loungers, which is of course a classic. Some wave machines, you can tell that they actually affect the water surface area as well and it's actually volumetric water in that sense. And then it's also relevant to notice that paths can also affect the pool paths as well. So you can actually play with that. And speaking of playing with paths, there are all kinds of path extras which I didn't talk about yet. So let me take a quick look at those. Basically, we have a bunch of path items for the different themes. So this is the aquatic roster. Then we have a bunch of stuff for the mythology theme. Then here's the regular generic theme as well as the resort theme, and finally the Viking theme path element. Oh, and before I forget, I want to head back to the main menu and show you the different careers that we can at least take a small gander at for now, and also some of the sandbox options. So if you start a new park, you can start from a tropical biome, a temperate biome, a Mediterranean biome, or a taiga biome. And once you confirm your location, there are all kinds of things that you can also change about your sandbox. So you can change general park settings 
as well as different things about the guests, the flat rides and whether they need power, tracked rides and whether they need power, some settings about staff, settings about water, and finally economy settings. Now I like to set all of this to maximum simulation sandbox, that is no simulation at all. But it is cool to see that you have these very specific controls if you do want to play with them from a gameplay perspective. And one last thing that I want to go over so that I've actually covered every single thing in the game. There are the facilities, of course, and for every restaurant we have a box but also a counter so that we can make our custom type shops. There is also a tour bus that people can leave from. There are power outlets as well as water stations and, well, all kinds of shops. Here's the ferry, by the way, which people can enter through as well. We have all kinds of stores coming back from the first game to uh, guest services, of course, Gulpy Soda, of course, Hats Fantastic. Uh, these are all going to be classics for most people and I think all of them are coming back from the first game except Foxy Coffee. Uh, which I'm a little bit sad about, but it is what it is, apparently. And placing down the whole bunch of them, there are also some staff buildings, uh, some power generation buildings, and some water uh, generation, sort of, and treatment buildings as well, because you'll have to manage all of that as well in the game. But I didn't want to de delve too deep into the management in this video, because it's already being long enough as it is. So, with that all said, that was hopefully a decent showcase of everything in the game, mostly from a creativity standpoint and from a I can place it and build it kind of standpoint. I hope you've learned something from this video and hopefully it wasn't too much of a drag to get through it. I'm secretly kind of glad to be done because it was quite a bit of work, but um, I'll get to it. For me, this really helped me to get used to the pieces and know what's possible in the game. And I think this is a good starting point to actually start building some things. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video and hopefully I'll be building something. Take care.